Hey guys, Farm Nerd here. We've got another problem. Got a nice spaghetti here coming off the back. And they're all wrapped in there in the knotter. So what we're probably gonna have to do is uh, pull these mounting bolts here and this entire thing will rotate up and out of the way where we can get to it and probably take that apart and uh, diagnose why this has been letting go. This is the same one that let go this morning. So we'll do some uh, troubleshooting and put it back together. But it is four o'clock on a Sunday evening and I gotta go to work tomorrow and I don't wanna get this hay all over me. Uh, so I'll probably start this tomorrow evening and do some reading and YouTubing, get some ideas for what I'm looking for. Hey guys, from Genert here. We're gonna get to uh, troubleshooting this Baylor knotter, which has about four or five strings hanging off the back of it um, from untied bales. So first step is gonna be clean it out so we can actually see what we're doing. All right, now we can see what we're doing. So we've got these old strings coming back here towards the back. They were just dragging along on the ground and they are caught somewhere in the knotter. This bit here is called the bill hook. That's actually what uh, grabs the string and twists around to make the knot. Um, so they might be caught in there and maybe the bill hook is just not letting go. Hard to say. Because um, it also looks like it's a little bit jammed in here. And looking at how ragged this is, I'm, I'm thinking this is a blade problem. So we're going to be taking those off. Um, you've got one here. We're looking at the back side of it. The sharp side is back here where I'm, my finger is. And this, the bolts for it are right here. Um, so to get this out, we got to lift, we got to rotate this whole assembly up this way by removing this nut. That'll let the whole thing come up and we'll be able to get a better look at what's going on. So that was not a stud, it was a bolt. Um, so the nut comes off the bolt and you do have to get this worked back out of the way before you can tilt up this assembly. And in this case, because the, the line hasn't broken, it's just uh, jammed, when we try to pull it up, it's getting stuck on this bale here that is partially baled. Uh, so we're going to need to cut off that bit and probably just cut off those tails as well so we can rotate this up. All right, so we got all of the tails cut off and we cut the piece that was attached to the bale way back here. So we've got a long section that was actually threaded so that we knew what went to what. So this came from this new bale. It's trapped in this thing, which I don't know the name of yet. We'll check in the manual. But all of this mess back here kind of seems to be stuck on this blade. So I'm hoping that's all it is. We've got a really dull blade and they got stuck between there. So we're going to pull off that bolt there. And hopefully this all comes falling out and that was the problem. All right, so we did get the knife off. It goes right there, comes off, sharp side there, dull side there. That's what you look at. Um, and yeah, all of these were just stuck behind there, weren't lodging anything else. So I think that is our problem, is this knife is too dull. And they were all stuck out at the tip. And focus, focus, there we go. Uh, if you can see that, it's kind of been eroded out there at the edge. 
it's not straight so we might need to do some uh, grinding on this we'll do a little test first though all right so we're gonna test this knife real quick we've just got a piece of twine that came out of the baler and we're gonna put this right out at the tip and try to cut it <sighs> didn't get through any of it so there's your problem so we'll try back here towards the edge where there's still original paint And it cuts right through. So, there's your problem. Dull blade. There he is. Got him. You got one down with the COVID, huh? Yep. And Kim looks like yep. she's on her way. Kim, too. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm probably not too far behind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stuck at home for a while, huh? Yep. Yep. But that's okay. Yeah. We have plenty to do here. <laughs> uh, well, but don't yeah. overwork your cells while you're sick. So. Yeah, yeah. I've been seeing a lot of studies talking about it is not good to work through COVID, even desk work. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so that's why I'm out here right now. I want to get this baler fixed before uh, before I get sick. Before you get sick. <laughs> All right. Well, I found you, Dad. There he is. Love you. Bye. Love you too. Bye. Hello. Hey, Dad. How goes it? Uh, all right. Uh, say right. hello to the YouTubers. I've got a technical oh. question for you. Oh, okay. Uh, the baler stopped nodding, and we had about six uh, string tails coming out the end of it before Kim realized it. Um, got it open, and it looks like one of the knives is just really dull. And wondering oh. what the best way to go about... Uh, sharpening a dull knife would be you know what they look like no i sure don't it's uh, basically a one-sided knife it's flat on the bottom got a wedge on the top oh okay so like the half of a scissor yep okay um yeah is it like damaged or just dull uh, it's got a little bit of wear at the tip, maybe half a millimeter, um, but it's really dull. I did a test. I had tried to cut a piece of twine by hand, and out at the tip, I couldn't even make a dent, and then I moved it back to where there's still some original paint, and it went right through it. Okay. Um, I'd probably just work it with a file first. Um, do you have a fairly fine file? Probably. Um, just work it with a file to kind of get it back into shape and then just use a, a sharpening stone. Um, if you got a way of, it, it does it, it comes out, you have it out. Yeah, but it's a 90 degree bend. Um, right after the end of the knife. I see. So it'd be kind of hard to get it in there. Yeah, yeah. Geez, I don't know. I'm thinking just, just a file, the you know, a fine file. Um, Both sides or just the flat side? Um, the angled side, and then the flat in the back side. You know, that that would be the main. If you can get to the back side. You want you want the so you want to sharpen the angle side and then keep the back side flat. Okay, okay, All we can do that. So yeah, that so when I sharpen a planer blade, which is how that is, that's the exact same shape as a planer blade. Mm. You um, you sharpen the bevel and then flatten the back, and it that's the best way to describe it. Um, okay, you are actually sharpening the back, but. The important thing is to keep it flat if it's that kind of a cutting device yeah okay yeah and probably just a, a nice little, little file and uh the trick is to keep the keep that ed you know that angle the same right right and, uh, which is always the art and 
instead of the science. <laughs> right. <laughs> so unless you got some some means of holding them, you know, mechanically. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So we got our knife clamped to the side of the baler with some vice grips because I can't find my vice. We got ourselves a pretty fine um, rasp, just like Dad said. So until you figure out what it is, because it is a feeling, I think, uh, to figure out what that angle is, you can come down here, focus, focus. There we go. You can come down here beside it and make sure you're at the right angle. And then after you do that a few times, you get the feeling for where the angle is and what it feels like. And you can feel when you get too much tip and you start to dig in and you can back it off. But start down beside where you can see what you're doing. All right, so we've got a nice, clean, shiny edge put on the bevel side. And next thing Dad said to do was flip it over and make the flat. And you know you're doing it right if you can feel on this back side and you feel that burr. That means you're removing material, pushing it off the edge. When you flip it over and flatten that off, it will become a, a knife edge. All right, so we've gone on both sides. I don't know probably close to a hundred times each side uh, and you just keep going down uh, on the bevel side and then going to the back side and trying to get that burr off and uh, after you go on the back side for a while it'll move to the front side and you got to go to that side work the burr off work the burr off work the burr off until you can't feel the burr anymore and that's how you know when you're ready to test you can't tell it's sharp by feeling it you can tell if you got the burr off. To test, we gotta grab a piece of bathing twine and try it out. And it cut pretty cleanly. Might need to do some more though. Alright, so we did another round of sharpening. Nice and shiny. And a little bit flatter. Flatten the other side as best I could, but this is not real flat. And I didn't want to spend the time to take this all down right now. Just trying to get back in business. So we'll do the same test we did before. Put it right there out on the edge. And cuts right through. Missed a little bit. There we go. Do another piece. There we go. All right, so we're gonna put it back on and then we should be back in business. So it's got uh, two holes here that accept these two pins here. That's how you know where it goes. And this is a 7 16th bolt. <laughs> Seven sixteenths. There we go. Oh, that's annoying. So apparently, you got to hold that up there. Got that good and tight, and it looks right where it's supposed to be. All right, so that is all the knife is put back on. All we have to do is put this back down into place and re-bolt it. But first, I want to clean up 
some of this uh, spare line here. And I'm actually thinking about trying to tie this end back together with some of this new string. And hopefully this one will bail. I don't have to restring it. So we're going to give that a try. Um, it should pass the knot. It has to pass the knot when you switch from uh, spool to spool anyways. So we're going to give it a try. So I'm going to clean up these bits here that didn't get cut well. And then retie this to the, to the bale. All right, so I got the piece coming out of the knotter down over those uh, to the right of that hook, to the left of that hook, and that will then feed down underneath this plate. However, it does it only reaches to about there, and that's uh, not enough to get tied off to. So what I did instead was pulled the bale line through. And this is getting pulled out from the box. And I'm now going to make the knot back here instead uh, so that it'll be at least somewhat tight when it starts to get going again. All right, uh, important to put the assembly back down into place before trying to tie this back together. But we were able to get it tied back together. And you can kind of tie this out here as far as you can instead of trying to tie it way back in there. And then what you can do is grab a hold of it back here at the bale and down here where it goes into the box and manually tighten it so that when it goes to uh, bale, it will already be tight. So this should be back in business. Uh, I'm sure the other knives are dull, and I need to do those, but uh, I kind of want to get through this season and then go through it this winter. Um, and on top of that, my son just got COVID, so I'm probably going to be sick here in a few days, and uh, I just wanted to get this back together and ready to go for when we recover here in a week or so. Um, so there we are, uh, we diagnosed the ponytails sticking out the back problem, got in there and uh, sharpened that blade with a fine rasp, or uh, rasp is the wrong word, I'll get it, uh, with a fine rasp on both sides working down to get rid of that uh, burr. Once the burr is gone, you can then test to see if it's sharp enough with a piece of baling twine and then put it all back together. Tie your old line back to your new line and you're ready to keep baling. Till next time. I forgot one thing. Uh, this bolt that keeps this assembly from rotating up, that's a half inch. I uh, just came out of the shop from working on the baler. We've got this beautiful sunset tonight. Till next time.